So you're joining us for the Teaching with Tinkercad series. It is a free webinar series for educators. Uh, specifically, this is our second webinar, which is titled Level Up from Tinkercad to Fusion 360. And my name is Jason Erdreich, and I am a STEM and engineering educator, and I'm working with the Autodesk team just to help support educators from all over through things like this webinar series. And, and I'm joined with my co-host, Randy. Hello. I was sorry. I was typing in the chat. I'm Randy. I am uh, a Tinkercad community manager, and I also work on a website called Instructables. And I'm really excited to be here with all of you, and I'll be helping out in the chat today, answering questions, and just generally helping on the webinar. So, hello. Thanks, Randy. And I also just want to point out, I'm actually joined by quite a few different Tinkercad and Autodesk team members every time we do one of these webinars. So there's a bunch of folks here behind the scenes that are going to be working to answer your questions uh, throughout the presentation, as well as in our dedicated Q&A, where you get to see everyone's faces and uh, make sure that you get to kind of collaborate with our Autodesk team here. So uh, in case you don't know, the Teaching with Tinkercad webinar series is going to be held virtually about every other Thursday. That's the plan. Of course, at some point in the year, we might run into holidays and things like that that might require us to move the dates around but in general it's going to be listed at 7 p.m eastern time and 4 p.m pacific time uh, and of course you can join from anywhere uh, to attend these webinars uh, as i mentioned today is all about leveling up to fusion 360 from tinkercad and looking ahead and we'll talk more about this at the end our next webinar is called tinkercad tips and tricks which will be on october 19th uh, there's also more information on the Tinkercad blog, and in fact, every time you sign into Tinkercad, there should be a nice little reminder there for you to check out the webinars uh, and, of course, attend the ones that we have planned for the future. So what we're going to do now is drop a poll on your screen in just a moment, and we would love to know uh, what subject you teach and what grade level you teach as well. So if you can select both a subject and a grade, it's a two-part poll, uh, that would be excellent. So then that way we can, again, get to know a little bit more about where you're coming from, uh, what do you teach, the subject area, the grade level, uh, kind of try to cater the conversations uh, for tonight's webinar to make it as relevant as possible for the folks that are joining us here. So just take a second, answer that poll for us. That's going to help us uh, really try to curve these things for you, which would be great. Yep. Yeah. Looks like there's a lot of people teaching technology and engineering, and uh, we're That's seeing awesome. a lot of people who are in elementary and middle school tonight. Um, excellent. excellent. So really all over the place. I'm also seeing some high school, even a small population of university level folks, which is great. That's really exciting to see. Um, so really a diverse crowd. That's awesome. That's a lot like our first webinar as well. So we really have uh, a really diverse group of users here in front of us, educators from all over the spectrum, which is great. And I think this that makes this webinar even more relevant because by combining Tinkercad with Fusion 360, uh, it really can make your teaching uh, applicable to a wide range of students and also worthwhile experiences as we prepare them for their future careers. And before I dive in more to the content, I just want to take a quick note to talk about how to participate. So there's a lot of you here, which is great. Uh, the best way to participate is to utilize the chat or the Q&A portion. So the chat moves pretty quickly, as you can see, when folks are typing, it moves very quickly. Uh, we also have the Q&A button where you can drop a question in and it'll kind of stay there until we can answer it. And then folks can actually go back and review the questions as well that are asked. So we want to encourage everyone to take advantage of that Q&A uh, question feature throughout the evening. I'll be going through a lot of content kind of quickly, so please drop your questions in as they pop up. And I also just want to remind folks that we're going to have a dedicated Q&A portion at the end after we go through all the content with all of the Tinkercad and Autodesk team members here with me uh, so we can really dive into your questions and support you. But feel free to drop questions into the chat, questions into the Q&A. We're going to be answering those throughout the entire webinar. Now, before we dive into some of the new content, I see that we have some users uh, that are new, uh, new to Tinkercad, right? So I want to take a quick moment and really just talk about what Tinkercad is at a brief level. Um, if you missed webinar one, it was all about getting started with Tinkercad as well as how to create your class in Tinkercad. And these webinars are recorded. So you can always go back to our channel uh, and check out previous webinars from this school year and even school years in the past. So if you missed that one, I definitely recommend you check out the recording. But if you've never heard of Tinkercad, uh, I want to just point out that it's actually three applications kind of bundled into one. So there's three ways that students can create and design. And Tinkercad is free for school. Uh, it's free for everybody. 
anyone can sign up and use Tinkercad with a free account. And it also works on pretty much any device. So it's browser-based, works great on Chromebooks or iPads or things like that, if that's what you have in your classroom. And within Tinkercad, students can create things through three-dimensional designing. So we'll see a lot of that tonight where you can combine different shapes and group things together, really make and design just about anything in this 3D environment in a really intuitive and exciting way. But a lot of people don't necessarily know that there are two other applications within Tinkercad as well. So the circuits application allows us to create and simulate electronic circuits. You kind of drag and drop components as if they were sitting on your workbench or taking them out of your, your toolbox right in front of you. And Tinkercad will let you connect wires, add LEDs or resistors or switches, even use electronic instruments to measure current flow uh, and actually simulate what the circuits would do right in front of you, which is really awesome. And we'll be talking about that in a future webinar, so stay tuned. And also code blocks. For your students who may have programmed in a block-based language before, this is gonna look really familiar. But what's unique about code blocks is that we're using a block based language to make three dimensional geometry. So we're actually creating 3D models uh, that you can orbit around, you can look at in 3D, really create incredible patterns by incorporating math and computer science skills, and then even take those 3D models and put them back into the 3D design editor to manipulate them or even 3D print them. So it's a really exciting way to learn computer science skills. And that's also coming soon in a future webinar. Now, as we kind of talked about uh, Tinkercad, one of the key topics for tonight is, of course, Fusion 360, which I can see is new to a lot of you. So Fusion 360 is another Autodesk program, and it's really the natural next step for students learning in Tinkercad. And one of the reasons is that, like Tinkercad, there's a lot of kind of mini applications within. You can design and create a lot of different things in Fusion 360 because there's an application for 3D design, there's a, a portion for manufacturing, a portion for electronics, you can simulate, you can even use a generative design feature to help you design, and it's an awesome tool for collaboration, which of course is something we really want to see in that education environment. And we're going to be going over all of these things kind of quickly throughout the evening. Um, but one of the common questions we really get that I want to address is why would you transition from Tinkercad to Fusion 360 in the classroom? And also, when would it be appropriate? You know, I, I saw that we have a lot of middle school, a lot of high school, some elementary school teachers. So when should you be having the conversation with your students of bringing them to the Fusion 360 platform? And it's a great question. There isn't necessarily one right answer. The first thing that I want to point out is that, of course, Tinkercad is designed to be a really intuitive starting point. Users who's never done CAD before, if you've never worked in 3D de design before, Tinkercad is created to be intuitive. It uses blocks and it's it's kind of like playing with toys or block toys or things like that that you've done uh, as, a, as a kid. And it allows designing to be quick and intuitive and easy to really create just about anything. Fusion 360, on the other hand, uses a different approach where we're creating perhaps a two-dimensional sketch uh, and turning it into a 3D object. So the approach for Fusion 360 initially is different, and that does make it a little bit harder to learn if you've never done CAD before. But for our students that have started with Tinkercad and are looking to take their designs to the next level, Fusion 360 is that great starting point. And as teachers, when we're working to provide uh, real-world learning experiences for our students, so preparing them for possible future careers, and we're trying to talk about potential careers and skills that they can use uh, in those careers that they're learning now in the classroom, that's where Fusion 360 is key. Because it has all the different features for be working in design, manufacturing, electronics, that pulls so many different industries and different careers into a single learning experience, which means it's really well suited for our older students. We recommend Fusion 360 at the high school level, but even you know perhaps students who are really advanced and trying to take their designs to the next level, that's also a great time to incorporate Fusion 360. So that's really the goal for tonight. Uh, we're gonna be going through all these different skills, all these different strategies. And I, of course, while we are gonna be moving kind of quickly, please utilize the chat uh, and let us know the questions you have as we pop up. But what we'd like to see is that you can see how students can take their designs like the spaceship, which was created in Tinkercad and utilize the skills and tools in Fusion 360 to just bring it to life really make their Tinkercad designs look entirely new, entirely real. Consider how would they manufacture it or produce it if they were working in these industrial fields. That is what we're trying to get our students to do, of course, as teachers to guide them through these skills for their future careers. And that's what we're gonna be talking about tonight.
So with my long-winded introduction, uh, hopefully you're excited. I certainly am to share all these features with you. The overall agenda is how to get started with Tinkercad. We know it's new for some of you, so we'll go through that kind of quickly. Then how to get started with Fusion 360, how to make accounts, what devices do you need, things like that. Uh, I'm going to demonstrate quite a few different tools in Fusion 360, certainly not everything. We don't have enough time for that tonight, but as much as I can to get you started. And then at the end, we'll talk about some certifications, contests, resources. And as I mentioned, we're going to conclude with a open Q&A uh, with the entire Autodesk team that's joined with me tonight. So getting started with Tinkercad, if you are new, uh, first off, there's a lot of different ways that you and your students can log in. You can log in by creating a free Autodesk account. You can sign in with a supported account. So if your school district uses something like Google email or a Microsoft email or something like that, uh, your students can probably log in with their school email just fine if it's supported. And also teachers have the ability to create what's called a class seat. So if you want students to be utilizing Tinkercad and maybe they aren't old enough to have an email or you just want to be able to manage their accounts, you can actually make an account for your students that's linked to your class. And we talked about that quite a bit in our webinar one. And I saw that the link to that went in the chat. So definitely check out webinar one uh, if you haven't already done so and if you're curious about learning more. I mentioned the word classes quite a bit. So a teacher in Tinkercad can create a class and create activities. This groups their students, so you can kind of manage your students within a single class, you can view their designs, and you can make activities to challenge them to design things under the constraints or the guidelines that you produce. It's also a great way to share templates. So for example, we, we were talking about our chess challenge in the first webinar, so you might provide this chess board as an activity and then challenge your students to go ahead and actually design a 3D model in that chess board that you provide, which is super cool. And of course, we can then share our designs uh, and by exporting them and sending them to Fusion 360 as a great way to enhance their creations. So uh, I'm gonna real quick, just kind of show you what that actually looks like. If I switch my screen, I am now currently signed into Tinkercad and specifically I'm talking about the 3D design editor. So I mentioned that there's the circuits feature, there's the code blocks feature. We're not gonna talk about those too much tonight. Uh, so that'll be future webinar conversations. Uh, right now, I'm in the 3D window, and we can see that I can orbit around. I can also change the name of my document here if I wanted to, and I can zoom in and out. And I, I have my basic shapes that I can work with. So in Tinkercad, it's very easy for me to grab shapes and manipulate the size of shapes and even rotate the shapes around or change how I'm viewing. And of course, even combine shapes together to really create just about anything in our designs, which is super cool. Also in Tinkercad, you'll notice that there's a lot of other types of shapes that you can work with. One of my favorites is the everyday objects. So if I'm trying to design something with popsicle sticks, I can actually prototype my design in Tinkercad using scale popsicle sticks, which is super cool. But these aren't designed to import into Fusion 360. When we're designing for Fusion 360, we want to stick with our basic shapes because they import really nicely so we can manipulate and enhance our designs. I'm going to create a pretty simple gear here by just using a box and setting my size by punching in some dimensions. And if you want to learn more about some of the things I'm doing, I know I'm going kind of quickly here. Uh, next webinar that we're holding is all about Tinkercad tips and tricks, where we're going to dive really deep into some of the different skills you can use, like the duplicate tool to make really unique patterns as you design advanced things like this. But hopefully you're seeing that it's really easy to manipulate your shapes once you get the hang of the tools. And I'm just gonna grab a couple more shapes here to make this look a bit more like a real world prototype with my dimensions. Um, I wanna point out that you can see I'm currently working in millimeters, but we know that we have folks joining us from all over the world. So Tinkercad allows you to customize your units uh, it can customize your work plane, so I can uh, really tune my entire work environment here as I need. And again, that's something that you can see all over the Tinkercad tutorials and blogs, as well as in our next webinar. So I think this is looking kind of gear-like. I would say this is good enough. I could customize the color and things like that, but I think this is a great design for me to take into Fusion 360. It's incredibly easy to do that. I could easily just click this export button and there's a nice Autodesk Fusion 360 button here. But before you do, it's important that you've created your Fusion 360 account. 
And the reason is after I say continue, because Tinkercad is reminding me uh, that only basic shapes will transfer, um, I have a couple of options. I can rename the document if I want. And if I've joined what's called a team, which with this account I have not, uh, I could actually send it directly to a team. And I'll talk about this in a moment, but it's a lot like a class. So you could create a team and invite your students and they can actually send that directly to the team for your class. Um, and I just want to check, can I just get a quick um, thumbs up? Can everyone see my Tinkercad screen? Is that is this working okay? Or have I been talking to myself? For a okay, great, just checking, just kind of confused. All right, good. Uh, and then what I could do is hit the send button and I could also download Fusion 360 in the local desktop. So let me cut back to my slideshow here to tell you how you can actually see Fusion 360. Uh, how could you actually get the accounts? Because we often get questions about what type of devices you need or things like that. So in order to send your designs with Fusion 360, the first thing you should know is that you need to access the Fusion 360 app. But you can do that in the browser, which means that Fusion 360 will work on pretty much any device you might have in the classroom. So it works on Chromebooks, just like Tinkercad would, uh, anything that you can launch the browser app. Or you can also download a desktop app, which works great on Windows or Mac computers as well. So a lot of great ways for you to actually access Fusion 360. Additionally, students do need an Autodesk account. So it's completely free to use Fusion 360 for education. Both educators and students can sign up using a free Autodesk account, uh, but you do need one of these to actually access uh, Fusion 360. And uh, the, the age limit might vary depending on where you are in the world. That changes country to country, of course, but students need to create their free account to actually open up and sign in to the app to use Fusion 360. As I mentioned, there's something in Fusion 360 called Team. So educators can create a team in Fusion 360, and it's kind of like a class in Tinkercad. I could call a team Mr. E's Classroom or maybe Period 2 Engineering, and I can invite all of my students to this class. And that's a space where I can manage their work. I can see their designs. Uh, students can also collaborate. Fusion 360 is incredibly collaborative. So a student could share a design with another student if they're working in a group. They can be working on the same design, different parts of the design. And of course, I, as the educator, can see that all through Fusion 360 Teams. And then you also saw that drop down where a student could very easily send their Tinkercad design to that Fusion 360 team once they've joined it. Uh, and also, I want to point out that Fusion 360 is infinitely customizable. I'll talk about this a little bit tonight as I demonstrate Fusion 360, but uh, you can actually import settings from Tinkercad. So you can adjust the mouse and the keyboard settings to be like Tinkercad, which makes learning Fusion 360 quite a lot easier. I noticed in the chat earlier on, some folks said that they were trying to get started with Fusion 360, but they were a little confused. The first thing I recommend everyone do is change your preferences to mimic Tinkercad, and I see that Randy just dropped in a tutorial on how to do that in the chat. So that's my number one tip for getting started with Fusion 360 is make it feel like Tinkercad to make your learning a little bit easier. I can tell you that's what mine feels like uh, on this side of the mouse. So I'm going to switch over to my Fusion 360 screen. I've imported my uh, gear. Let me just share. All right. So I've imported this design from Tinkercad uh, by clicking the open in Fusion 360. So you can see that my design imported. Something else that's really cool is my parameters imported. So uh, the units that I was working in in Tinkercad imports, the color imports, which is really great. So really we can see the design uh, just like it was, but there are a couple minor changes. You might notice that the cylinder in this design looks a lot more smooth than it does in Tinkercad. Um, and also you might notice that we can click on different features. And that's because the way that Fusion 360 works is parametric, meaning that it's working with solid objects. So it's converted our Tinkercad design into being a solid part, which can be very smooth. It also means that I can edit individual faces, which is great. Uh, and that's a little bit different than designing in Tinkercad, but that also gives us some different tools. So let's say, for example, that after importing this, I want to change uh, the size of something. Let's say that I actually want this gear to be uh, perhaps four millimeters more tall than it was. And it's very easy for me just to click on a face and manipulate that. Additionally, I could modify any of these edges that I have. So if I were to grab my fillet tool, I could click on all of the side profiles of my little gear teeth and please momentary pause as I model live, which is always a fun thing to do. I can click on all these, hopefully not missing one and add a fillet to 
round the side profile here of the teeth. I think I did miss one. That's okay. Nobody's perfect, right? Uh, I can round things over just like so. And that's a feature that folks often ask, like, is that possible to do with our Tinkercad design? Uh, because we're working as a solid now in Fusion, we can grab individual edges and we can manipulate them. So just for example, I might actually add a chamfer here and put a nice little chamfer on the top of my gear. Now, as you can see on this top toolbar, we have a lot of different buttons. Right now, I'm working in the 3D design mode, which gives me these different 3D design buttons specifically for working with solids. And Fusion 360 has a lot of menus, so depending on what you're trying to do. Um, you might have saw me click on this modify and grab a different tool. This toolbar is infinitely customizable. So let's say that you and your students are consistently using the appearance tool to change the color of things. I can actually pin that to my toolbar. So as you learn Fusion 360, you can customize this uh, to put your favorite tools. And I, as a teacher, always like to encourage my students and kind of on the first day set up our toolbars to be the workflow that flowed really well for us and our class. Something else I love to do that's super fun and easy to do is add threads. So I'm going to use the thread tool here just to click on my, uh, on my little gear thing, which I'm not sure if it's a gear anymore, but that's okay and I can customize the size of my threads. There's a bunch of imported libraries uh, for different screw sizes and things like that already in Fusion 360, not just for threads, but really just about anything you're doing that allows you to customize your model and really manipulate them to enhance the design of what you are doing. Something else that's really cool that you can do with 3D designs and directly relates to industry practices is creating a drawing. If you're going to have a part manufactured, uh, something that's really common is creating a technical drawing. And I love to challenge my students to do this, to present their parts, to display them as if they were going to manufacture them, but also as a powerful communication tool to showcase the features. So I can click on, again, the unit that I want or the page size that I want to work with. And I can actually create a technical drawing of my model just by simply importing uh, different sides and faces, determining what face I would like to show in my technical drawing. And I'm not taking a ton of time right now uh, to make things perfectly organized or level. So bear with me. Um, I might take off some points if uh, everything's not perfectly aligned, but you know, we won't criticize too much in this uh, high speed demonstration, but you can see that it's really easy to drop your parts in. It's also super easy to customize the view. So let's say, for example, that I actually want this to uh, not be transparent, but instead solid. I can customize that. Uh, and I can also drop in dimensions. So if I needed to label how large things are, I can click between any two points and drop my dimensions. I can click on any feature, and the dimension will automatically be pulled directly from my design. Uh, and this is, again, not only a great industry practice that you can bring into the classroom, but it's an awesome tool for students to present their designs and to really showcase what they've created. These drawings not only live in Fusion 360, it's uh, very easy to export them as a PDF so students can drop them into a slideshow or a presentation, you know, wherever they need to turn them in or share them with their peers. So I'm going to head back to my gear. And something else I just want to show you is what if you have multiple components, meaning multiple parts, right? So I'm going to switch to a uh, design that I prepared earlier with my gear that I just created, but it has this nice little base plate, which was actually modeled in Fusion 360. So you can see that I have this component, which was added, and we're going to be talking more about that in future webinars. But something that's really cool is the assembly feature, where I can actually create a uh, joint uh, and tell Fusion 360 where and how these parts would go together. Uh, whether they revolve around like this thread would, or whether they slide, if it was some type of pin, or perhaps uh, a pivot point. Let's say that you are designing a part for a robot, something I love doing. Uh, you can snap your parts together, have multiple components, and really work with all of them into one Fusion 360 work plane, which is great. Another cool feature is bringing our designs to light. So if I switch over to the Render tab, this is a lot of fun. In render, we can actually simulate what these would look like if they were sitting in front of us. I know I used the term simulate there. That is something different. We'll talk about it in a moment. But I mean, show as if these products were in the real world, in the metal as they were. 
So I can, for example, change uh, the material. Let's say that I actually want this to be brass polished in some type of environment, like a picture. Like if I was designing a product that I actually wanted to see out in the real world, I can put those designs out in the real world and see what they would look like. And I don't think this little gear handle thing looks uh, at home in the plaza, but you get the idea. I could switch this to say a photo booth and I can adjust my, my brightness or even turn on reflections, adjust my camera settings as if I was really doing this with a real camera to render what this product would look like. And that's a really key industry component. Let's say that you're challenging your students to design something uh, and in their presentation, they're, they're, they're trying to show uh, how that product would look if it was actually gonna be on sale. Bringing in this rendering component is just another great way to tie these scale skills to a career practice. And I've already exported one of these at full high resolution, which might be a little small on my Zoom screen, but you can see that Fusion really creates this very high detailed rendering of our design. And then this image could be downloaded. You can even render things in 3D so you can orbit all the way around them at high detail in 3D and export them and share them and collaborate, which is a great feature just to take our Tinkercad designs and really enhance them, which is super cool. Another really cool thing that we can do with our Tinkercad designs are animations. So I'm gonna switch back to one that I didn't do yet. Um, if I head on over to animate, you'll notice at the bottom toolbar, I have something that kind of looks like a video editing tool, right? Almost like a timeline uh, for adding keyframes. And what I can do is I can actually adjust my camera angle and move and orbit around like so. And even let's say manipulate my parts. Like for example, if I wanted this gear to um, lift off, I can move keyframe by keyframe. And I certainly won't do this for too long here but showing you that you can make animations with your models. So if I press play, you can see that all of my camera movements and my part movements are animated into this video. And that's another industry and another career that you can bring into Fusion 360 just using these 3D designs. And I know that's not super smooth, which is why I prepared this one ahead of time, which is a little bit better. Uh, so I can show you that if you take your time and really manipulate your keyframes, you can make models that you know, showcase again, what they would be doing if they were real products in front of them. So these are things that you can drop from Tinkercad into Fusion, render them into different materials, animate them. And that's gonna allow your students to, again, just really level up those designs and make just about anything using these powerful tools, which is super fun. And that's a great feature to do. Now, another thing that's really fun to work with, uh, is the manufacturing component. And I, I've already seen quite a few questions about manufacturing, um, meaning what if I wanted to produce this using a CNC mill or a 3D printer? And that's a question that we get quite a bit. So how can you say, for example, 3D print from Tinkercad? Well, the best way to 3D print from Tinkercad is to take your designs to Fusion 360 and then click this manufacturing button. Before I do though, let's say that I actually wanna make many of these. I can use something like the pattern tool here just fix my view. Uh, so I can use the pattern tool uh, to actually make many copies of my gear. If I can wake my keyboard up here, um, perhaps I want to make multiple of these uh, and 3D print them or produce them in any other way. So Fusion 360 will allow you to make copies and then head on over to this manufacturing tab. I saw earlier in the chat, some folks were asking about, can you mill, can you use a lathe, can you use a 3D printer? The answer is yes. All of those production techniques are actually incorporated into Fusion 360. So when you're trying to teach your students about manufacturing, how products are made through an additive method or a subtractive method, or even a formative method, if you wanna talk about injection molding, all of those tools are integrated into Fusion 360 for us to learn how we can produce our designs. So under the milling tab, I could connect to a CNC mill, Turning tab would allow me to use a lathe. Uh, additive is, of course, something that's popular with 3D printing. But even you have uh, fabrication if you wanted to laser cut or water cut something as well. But based on the audience here, I'm seeing a lot of questions in 3D printing. So the first thing I want to do after preparing my model like so is set up a manufacturing design. 
So this is where you actually need to select the type of machine. And again, I'm working with a 3D printer right now, but it would work roughly the same if you were trying to set up a design for CNC or laser cutting. Fusion 360 has an extensive library of printers that are already imported uh, and machines that are already imported. But of course, you can add your own. I'm going to be working with a generic uh, 3D printer here, so not necessarily a real one, but you can import uh, any printer that you have in your classroom and set that up to work with Fusion 360. I can also change my print settings. So uh, depending on the type of plastic you want to print with, uh, you can customize those settings. So if I want to print with PLA, which I think is the recommended and most common for the classroom, I could change these settings with you know, the infill pattern or uh, support material, all those settings that you'd want to see as you prepare your designs to be 3D printed, you can customize right here in Fusion 360. So if I select PLA, I've selected my printer, and I want to say uh, what my models are, and I don't have them grouped, so I need to select all of them, but of course that's fine. Um, I can actually prepare these to be printed. Uh, not like that. We want to, of course, move them so they are uh, not hanging off the print bed there, like so. And uh, what Fusion 360 will do is it will actually simulate uh, what that would look like on your 3D printer. So if I actually switch to simulating my toolpath here, um, we can see exactly what the 3D printer would do layer by layer. And I love showing this to students. Um, I always love teaching students about G-code if they're at that high school level, teaching them about manufacturing, showing them what the printers will do, because I think we know that you can't necessarily sit in the classroom for 12 hours and watch the printer. But this is a great opportunity for you to show students uh, simulating line by line what the 3D printers would do as it actually manufactures their parts. It's also a great way to see if there's any errors. By being able to simulate this and zooming in, you might notice where there's an overlap or a flaw in our design. But because we're doing this in the same application, I designed these parts in Fusion 360, I'm preparing them to be manufactured in Fusion 360. If I were to switch back to my design tab and change something, uh, I could then just simply re-simulate and the tool paths and my 3D printed design would just update and prepare uh, with whatever changes I make. It's, it's kind of a fluid process for you to be able to going back and forth to designing, manufacturing, adjusting your different versions and things like that, all within this one application, which is great. And uh, after this, if I really did want to 3D print this, I could just export my G-code uh, and send that directly to my printer or my machine or whatever it was that I am working with. Now, another cool thing uh, that you can do in Fusion 360 is called simulation. And this is more for our older folks, perhaps those uh, high school and college level uh, people who joined us, where you might want to talk about stress test analysis or uh, thermal properties and stress like that, even working with injection molding. Uh, and if I just switch my screen back to my slideshow, you'll see that I've taken a simulated study for this gear part where I want to know how much force would it take to actually break one of these little uh, legs coming off the gear, or one of these little teeth. So I could say that I'm going to make this using PLA uh, at whatever density it is that I want to make this with uh, and actually simulate what that stress would be. And, and that's just one of the many studies you can do using the simulate feature, whether you want to test thermal properties or force or all the other great things, again, right with our designs and right within the Fusion 360 window. Uh, and another awesome feature that uh, isn't really relevant for my gear, to be honest, but for maybe a more complex design is called generative design. So generative design will look at our model and it'll actually propose potential design solutions. So what you're looking at with this little animated feature here is some type of uh, mobility chair. Uh, and you can see this green design was modeled in CAD, but now Fusion 360 is proposing, hey, what if you design it like this? And as the engineer, we could say how much we want that part to weigh. We could say how much we want that part to cost. Uh, and Fusion 360 will actually propose different solutions that we can test and simulate right within our window to really streamline design. And another great way for you to incorporate those careers. This is an awesome thing if you're trying to talk about mechanical engineering or product design uh, and bringing those industries and those careers directly into the classroom, right with what your students are creating and right with their actual designs, which is, again, just another Fusion 360 feature. Now, I've gone through that very, very quickly. Uh, as I mentioned, there are so many different things uh, that you can create uh, in Fusion 360 with all these different 
uh, kind of sub applications from manufacturing to animation to rendering all these great things here. Um, as you saw in the chat, there's lots of resources for you to follow up and learn more and dive deeper into all the buttons. I promise I showed you maybe 1% of all the buttons that are in Fusion 360 as we're working with our Tinkercad models. Uh, but something else I just want to point out is not only is this webinar recorded, if you want to go back and play things back a little more slowly, uh, we're going to post that by the end of the week. Uh, the slides will also be shared. So for all of our folks that are attending this live, you'll be able to go back in and within the slideshow, there's different tools and resources here that I didn't necessarily show, but just know there's lots of great links and things for you to grab from this slideshow. Now, something else that's super cool, and again, preparing our students for their future careers, whatever they may be, is the certifications that Autodesk provides. Uh, this isn't exclusive to Fusion 360. There's lots of great Autodesk certifications all over the whole application suite, but Fusion 360 does have quite a few for manufacturing, 3D design, and others. Uh, that's great for both educators, if you want to become a certified Fusion 360 educator, for example, or for your students to kind of future-proof their resume, say that they've learned these skills and actually acquired an official certification from Autodesk. So that's great. And you can see that the link is right there to check that out as so. Um, and again, we kind of covered a lot. Uh, there's a lot of different things. So key things to remember. Tinkercad is this really great accessible and user-friendly design application that fits well into any classroom by allowing their students to bring their ideas to life and really make it about just anything. By working in that blocks-based uh, design environment. You can drag and drop shapes, you can manipulate shapes, work with different uh, blocks and things like that to bring your ideas to life, even if you don't have uh, prior skills in CAD and in 3D design. Fusion 360 then becomes that natural's next step, right? If your students design something in Tinkercad, but perhaps they want to enhance that through some of the rendering tools that I showed you, right? Making it look like real metal or, or even simulating it to see if it would break, uh, or perhaps doing an animation to showcase what uh, a model might look like if it was like a rocket taking off. Who knows, right? Just being able to open up your students' possibilities by allowing them to create really just about anything with the Fusion 360 tools is a great way to transition and bring their designs in. Um, so let's face it, for example, you wanted to exclusively use the animate feature because you want your students to animate the Tinkercad designs. That's possible, right? But as you saw, there's great ways to enhance the 3D design component or man manufacture it as well. And as I've mentioned, there are so many different resources uh, available to teachers uh, through the Tinkercad blog, through all the Autodesk education resources and things like that, which I know we've dropped into the chat a little bit tonight, but you can, of course, find out more by visiting the uh, Fusion 360 educator sites and things like that to grab those resources and uh, check out the tutorials and guides how to do specific things or dive deeper into creating your teams. Uh, there's a whole video about all that, uh, which we are dropping those links into the chat for as well. Um, so again, before we dive in and conclude, we got a couple closing thoughts. Uh, for all of you who attended here live, thank you so much. Uh, you will be receiving a one-hour professional development certification in a follow-up email by the end of the week. That email will have links to the important things that we said, uh, a cool certification uh, for you attending this webinar, a link to the recorded video, and a link to the slideshow. All that's going to be sent out to our folks who have attended this live. So thank you for all of you for joining us this afternoon uh, as we work here. Um, and I'm going to actually hand it over to Randy. I know he's super busy in the chat, but Randy, if I could borrow you for a second, uh, we have some really exciting things going on right now in the Autodesk community that I think uh, you might want to tell our folks about. Right. So the first thing we have going on is uh, Tinktober, 31 days of Tinkercad designing every day, um, a different new prompt to encourage you to practice your design skills, get your students interested in designing. Um, it should be a lot of fun. It's all Halloween themed this month because October, we're on our way to Halloween, and um, we hope you. Uh, we're going to be sharing the best designs on social media throughout the course of the month. Uh, Nicole will be sharing those with you, and uh, yeah, we hope you participate. It should be a lot of fun. Yeah, and you know what? I also think that while this is, of course, our Tinktober, you just learned a lot of cool things with the Fusion 360. If you want your students to animate some uh, spooky ghosts or things like that, go for it, right? Try those things out. All right, and the other thing I want to bring to your attention is Instructables. I kind of mentioned it very briefly earlier, but Instructables is a project sharing website, and we have a whole page just for teachers. We can find all kinds of resources for hands-on learning projects for the classroom, and we also have contests. And that's a really great opportunity for your students to push themselves and kind of design things along a theme and get hands-on building and learning experience and possibly win some stuff. And um, 
one of the contests we have going on that closes in a couple of days it might be a little late for this contest but has a fusion 360 prize with advanced students and they want to start designing fusion 360 there's a woodworking contest so they could design stuff they could learn all about using parametric design and fusion and then post a project the other thing first time author contest so assuming most of your students or yourself have never used instructables before this contest gives you an opportunity to try it out um we have special judges prizes for tinkercad and fusion 360 users and if it's your first time posting you could kind of compete against other people who are also competing for the first time so it kind of like gives you a nice like easy way to enter into the contest system uh, the other thing our ever popular robotics contest also has prizes especially with tinkercad and fusion 360 um and yeah, every year we run a robots contest and every year we see lots and tons of great entries. So if your students are advanced building robots, this is a great contest for them. And then I'd be remiss not to mention we have the CNC contest starting this coming Monday. Um, we are always running Fusion 360 contests for students to participate. So if your student is using Fusion 360 and they're doing anything at all with CNC, and that's kind of we kind of take a broad umbrella approach to that. Um, they could design something and participate in this contest, and it should be a lot of fun. And finally, this is the contest. This is the uh, kind of adult swim here. This is uh, the contest for educators. It's a project-based learning contest. Uh, we're giving away $40,000 in prizes. And if you have a project that you use in the classroom, you're like, I'd like to share with other educators how I do this. You could share it and possibly win some stuff. So I encourage you to check it out, potentially participate. Awesome. Thank you, Randy. That's a lot of things, right? So, so many things going on in the Autodesk community right now, supporting both Tinkercad and Fusion 360 and just sharing different ideas. Um, on that uh, teacher's page, specifically on Instructables, there's great projects that have been posted previously, specifically using Fusion 360 and Tinkercad. So that's a great place to go. In addition to the Tinkercad blog, um, I want to remind everybody that we have another webinar coming up, Tinkercad Tips and Tricks. At the very beginning of this webinar, I made that gear in Tinkercad super fast. So we're going to go a lot slower and talk specifically about great tools and strategies for successful design and creation in Tinkercad. And we'll kind of briefly cover a little bit about everything as we go through that and dive into the Tinkercad application. So that's uh, in two weeks on October 19th, uh, same place, same time. Um, and again, before we dive into our q and A, I I just want to take a moment and say thank you to everybody who attended this webinar with us live this afternoon. You'll have a follow-up email uh, coming to you within the next day or so that has the slideshow, the recording, all the great resources. And of course, this is going to be posted to uh, YouTube for all the folks that are joining us uh, after the fact. So hello to you as well. Um, so for myself and the entire Autodesk and Tinkercad team that's joined me and tonight, and again, thank you to everyone here for answering the questions thus far. Uh, thanks so much. Thanks for joining us. And at this stage, we're going to dive into our Q&A.